Pope Francis boarded a papal flight at Rome's airport and departed for Cuba Saturday morning. This begins a nine-day tour for the Pope, where he will spend four days in Cuba before flying to the United States to visit Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City. This is his first official visit as a Pope to the two countries since after the Vatican helped mediated talks that led to the restoration of diplomatic relations between Washington and Havana, a surprising development announced in December 2014. The Vatican said it hoped France's trip would help bring an end to the 53-year-old U.S. blockade, which has cost the island nation's economy about $833.7 billion in five decades. Pope Francis will give a public outdoor mass at Revolution Plaza in Havana on Sunday, which is expected to draw 1.5 million people. After two terms of the right-wing businessman Mauricio Macri as Buenos Aires mayor, public health care in the city is not showing signs of improvement. Under Macri, public spending in this area dropped from 23% to 18% of the city's total budget in 2015. This has mainly affected the lives of low-income families, such as the case of Nicolás Romero, whose children usually receive medical assistance in the Garraham Pediatric Hospital in the inner south of Buenos Aires. For many like him, who cannot afford private health care, this issue is one of his main concerns. For a worker, this means a lot, because Argentina is one of the few countries where health care is free, and the fact that they want to cut the budget of the doctors who practically do miracles, it's frustrating. In the case of the Garahan Hospital, the cuts amount up to $47 million for 2014 and 2015. In addition, all the 27 healthcare facilities in Buenos Aires are facing problems like poor infrastructure, lack of emergency exits, and many of them do not have enough medics or nurses to assist their patients. This obviously affects those with lower income. That is really alarming, because those who can afford private health care can deal with it. But those who can't do it, those who can only receive assistance in a public hospital, are clearly being affected. The Buenos Aires city government has also been accused by the city's auditor's office of licensing the maintenance of two non-existing healthcare facilities to the same private holding that operates the city's subway service, at the same time that it faces protests for the problems in public hospitals. When you see a budget as big as the city's budget, which is one of the highest in Argentina, you see that the cuts are applied in places like this where it affects poor children. The situation of the public health care in Buenos Aires seems to be a proof of what neoliberal policies have always achieved, reducing public spending and favoring big businesses at the expenses of the poor and working families. Laureano Ponce, Telesur, Buenos Aires. With just 48 hours to go before Sunday's elections, Greek Syriza supporters rallied in central Athens on Friday to support left-wing former Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras, bid to be re-elected and gain control of parliament. The election appears too close to call. Polls released late Friday put Tsipras ahead of his main opponent, New Democracy Party's Vangelis May Marakis, by between 0.7 and 3 percentage points. If the results remain this tied, this would mean Greece would likely be set for another coalition government led by either Syriza or New Democracy. Cyprus called for the snap election last month to try to win an outright majority in parliament after internal dissent in his party surfaced as a result of the debt payment deal he made with the European Union included spending cuts. Israel carried out airstrikes in the Gaza Strip early Saturday morning, hitting three Hamas government security sites and injuring one Palestinian. Two airstrikes targeted a neighborhood in Gaza City and another in an empty field. The latest attack on Gaza, which has been under Israeli blockade since 2006, comes after two rockets were fired from the Strip into Israel.
The news comes amid escalating violence in Jerusalem and the West Bank after Israeli troops entered the holy Muslim site of Al-Qaqsa Mosque in the Palestinian East Jerusalem. Dozens of Palestinians have been injured as Israeli forces fired tear gas and grenades at those protesting the violation of their holy sites. On Friday, however, clashes at the mosque following the prayers and the Palestinian Red Crescent said eight Palestinians were seriously hurt after being shot by live rounds. Japan Parliament passed controversial security bills into law early Saturday, which could see Japanese troops fly abroad for the first time in 70 years. As many as 40,000 Japanese protesters demonstrated outside of the parliament Friday night to oppose the laws they fear could transform the proudly pacifist nation. Right-wing Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said the changes were made to normalize the country's military policy, which has been restricted to self-defense and aid missions by a pacifist constitution imposed by the U.S. after World War II. While Abe told reporters that the move was made to prevent wars, opponents of the country's remilitarization argued that this will lead to the country into supporting U.S. military interventions abroad. Facts that have marked the course of history. Productions designed in the English language and made for the English-speaking world. This is Documentary. Watch it on telesur.net slash English. Telesur, wherever the news, you'll be there.